Good evening, campers, streamers, and babysitters, and welcome to my raw reaction review of 65. Alrighty, it's been no secret. Um, I'm a creature feature fan. I love me a good creature feature. Sharks, you know, alligators, werewolves, Bigfoot, doesn't matter. Uh, one of those things that I absolutely adore is a good dinosaur flick. And we don't get many of them. And, you know, in lieu of uh, Jurassic Park Dominion coming out last year, and which I got to say, I was probably a little uh, kinder to than most. I did think that movie was quite a bit of fun. But uh, I don't go in expecting the world from a dinosaur property, especially the Jurassic Park franchise, you know. Give me some good dino kills. Get me some cool looking dinos. That's all I need. But what was intriguing about this movie was that it's a new original property from the writers of A Quiet Place. And uh, A Quiet Place, the first one, is one that I really liked. I like that a lot. The sequel's okay. Um, you know, it kind of started to lose some steam for me there, but it's not bad. So when they came out and they're coming out with this dinosaur film and, you know, Adam Driver's in it and he's crash landing on... A planet that is it in the past is it something else it's you know it, it really piques my interest you know we talked about it on the sunday scaries for a bit that i was like i'd love to see uh more of an aggressive take to the dinosaurs because you know jurassic park for what it is it's kind of lost some of its edge it's going to be more uh family friendly as uh you know things go on which is fine you know it's always a good way to introduce kids to the realities of uh you know creature features and how not many of the creatures are very nice uh but this one excited me this was definitely one that i was keen on seeing and now that i've seen it how do i feel about it well i thought it was pretty darn good i don't have many complaints i think that it's hard to have complaints for a movie that is so short and if i had to pinpoint it that would probably be my biggest complaint about this film it comes in at an hour and 33 minutes and I think that for what it is, um, they do well with what they've got going for them. There's, you know, two characters in the film primarily. Uh, you know, it's about Adam Driver. He's a basically, as he people have described him, a, <laughs> a interplanetary uh, space bus driver, where he kind of just shuffles people in cryo sh uh, sleep from planet to planet, um, and he's doing a job for his family to get lots of money. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where his, his ship crashes and then we find out, and this is not a spoiler, they give this to you right off the rip, uh, even though they haven't put it in the trailers, that uh, this actually does take place with another civilization Adam Driver's from 65 million years ago. So he's not human, technically. I mean, looks human, acts human, but he's not human. Um, and so... When they kind of introduce that, it does, again, go into that very classic sci-fi kind of nature to it. And um, it is one of those things where I was in. I was like, that's a cool take on this. I was weird. I, from the trailer, I thought maybe it's going to go into a wormhole. Is there going to be something this where he goes back 65 million years ago? No, they have no clue what the hell dinosaurs are. <laughs> they, they think they're aliens. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun uh, to put them in that scenario. But uh, yeah, they spend a lot of time with these characters, more so than I thought they would for a movie that is so short. You know, the dinosaur scenes are in here, and I wouldn't say that they're sparing. They definitely make up probably about 60% of the film. But for a movie that markets itself so much around being about like dinosaurs and, you know, the trailer is just filled with them, you kind of expect this to just be like a jump right off the rip this is what we're doing but no we gotta remember these guys wrote a quiet place and that has a lot to do with character do i think that they are as developed as um you know characters from a quiet place i'd say a little less i i would say that you know they set it up to where they both have like kind of a language barrier and it makes it tough uh for communication it does add for some very cute and funny moments between the two characters um, and they do give Adam Driver's uh, character a decent backstory. You know, it's nothing breaking the mold. It's something we've seen a hundred times before. But with that being said, it's it's done really well here. And, you know, I, I think that really what you're coming to see when it comes to this movie is the dinosaur action and the kind of melding of that sci-fi world and this prehistoric world. And that part they did 
an excellent job with. I, I was really into all of Adam Driver's gadgets. They showed them off quite a bit. Uh, his little gun that he uses is really cool. Um, you know, it's an amalgamation of many different guns. If you played a lot of video games that you can kind of see, they kind of took their favorite parts of everything and jammed it all together. Uh, but the dinosaurs themselves, they look great and they're aggressive as hell. And I appreciate that a lot. Um, you know, it's something where it's like, this is a very savage planet. And uh, I think that the fact that we've never really, in my opinion, seen a truly prehistoric planet on screen with, uh, you know, kind of like a modern day character stepping into it. They really show that even if you have all the tools, tricks and, you know, all the stuff at your disposal, uh, you're still going to have a hard time dealing with nature and dealing with, you know, just what this planet has you endure uh, to survive. And I think that that's one of the biggest uh, pluses I can give the film is that the action is wonderful. It's a lot of fun. It's exhilarating. There's a lot of great uh, jumps that'll get you in the movie. You know, I'm not a big jump scare guy, but these were actually well crafted and well executed. I love the design of a lot of the dinosaurs. I think the scenarios they put them in are a lot of fun. Um, but again, I think that really uh, what does hurt that at the end of the day is just the fact that the movie is so short. Like we just really kind of as soon as things get rolling and things get moving and you're kind of expecting, you know, set piece after set piece, the set pieces are good, but there's just not that many of them. I think this movie could have done with maybe another 15, 20 minutes of exploration and action. But again, that's me. I'm I'm a very uh, big fan of this kind of stuff. I love the high, uh, you know, B rate, high budgeted B rate films. You know, I gave Cocaine Bear a very high rating uh, because I thought that was such a fun concept. And I think this is a really fun concept. I think that this is a great movie to go out, get some popcorn with, go out with friends, go out with family and just enjoy yourselves because it's not trying to break the mold. Like I said, it's not trying to, you know, be the next great Jurassic Park film. It's like, I think people may have put those expectations on that, but that's not what this wants to be. This wants to be a fun time, um, you know, with a scenario that, almost feels to me like a trial run now they don't necessarily set it up for sequels or anything but just the concept of bringing back the dinosaur film is something that i think we need to see more of we need more competitors out there uh with jurassic park uh because obviously you know that formula is starting to get stale with people uh but you know I think if we had some more aggressive, more R-rated dinos out there, I think that it would uh, really heighten things back up. And I love the fact that we're just getting more creature features in general. I think that there's something really primal and really creepy and scary about watching some unnamed or just unfathomable beast ripping characters to part, especially when you have uh, good character work like they have in this movie. Now, overall, I'm just going to say, is this movie um, an absolute must-see? I would say if you are into these kind of movies, if you are looking forward to 65, if this seems like something you'd have a good time with, you will go and you will have a good time with this and you'll enjoy it. Uh, for me, I'm going to pick this thing up on Blu-ray. It's definitely something I'll watch again and again. Uh, but for others, you know, I would totally understand if you're on the fence about it, maybe wait for streaming uh, just because, you know, it is going to kind of maybe catch people off guard with just how much time they spend with characters as opposed to just action set piece after action set piece i think that that is like worth it but i have seen some complaints from people saying that there's just not enough dinosaur action and uh you know for me i thought it was a pretty decent balance but uh you know i could totally see that side as well so i'm gonna say if you're interested go check this thing out in theaters i thought this was pretty darn good uh it's not the greatest film in the world by any stretch of the imagination but i still enjoyed myself and i'd still recommend it uh, if you're into it, but if you're on the fence about it, wait for streaming. But alrighty, guys, that's going to wrap me up here for my review of 65. It's a lot of fun. Um, on the channel right now, in celebration of 65, we just uh, did a little collaboration with Alex from Beyond the Void podcast. It's a great channel. You guys should definitely go check it out. Uh, they do a lot of great stuff over there, and their podcast is on Spotify and all the other places where podcasts can be found. Uh, but yeah, we did a little collaboration with him in Celebration of 65 watching Carnosaur 2, which is <laughs> not the greatest dinosaur film in the world, but honestly, a lot of fun. And it was really wildly entertaining. Uh, that video is up for you guys right now. It's kind of like a mystery science theater 
set up where you kind of watch the film with us and we send you highlight clips and then you get our thoughts after luke Luke is a massive sequel slut i'm learning as we continue the uh the podcast here he uh only recommends movies that are sequels and um and uh christine that's That's right (laughs) see what's the matter sequels and christine that's it so then you must have loved halloween ends right they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand I got it. it was perfect but yeah that was a lot of fun we also have our spoiler review coming out tomorrow for uh scream six with evan from rockland graves you can see our two other collaborations talking about scream and scream five with him as well as our non-spoiler review for scream six which is already up on the channel lots of great stuff lots of fun and yeah all in all, this has been a wonderful, wonderful week of movies. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to say that I enjoyed 65 a lot. A little criticisms the here and there about Scream. But yeah, it's it's been a good week. And we got a lot more good stuff on the horizon. So stick with us. And uh, all right, guys, it's going to wrap me up here. So until next time, I am Dylan Newell. And uh, remember, stay scared.